agriculture plays a vital role in California's economy. The state leads the nation in farm production, producing more than half of all the vegetables, fruits, and nuts grown in the United States. In order to remain competitive in this industry, scientists will need to continue to conduct research into finding new ways of improving farm production. Over 14 percent of Californians are employed in farm-related jobs, yet the agricultural field is often overlooked by young people deciding on careers. Students in high school are often unaware of the opportunities available in the agricultural sciences and the important role that research plays in the farm industry. The University of California is working to change all that. At the university's Kearney Agricultural Center in Fresno County, an internship program has been put in place to give students a first-hand look into the world of scientific research. The program brings in students from local Valley High Schools for an intensive eight-week internship in which they actively participate in ongoing research conducted by UC scientists. The applicants must show an interest in agriculture and the sciences, and many of the students who apply are involved with the Future Farmers of America, or FFA. The background on, on the Ag Futures Internship Program goes back to the uh, early 80s. And in the Valley here, we've always felt that we didn't have the uh, amount of opportunities for attention to Valley students and being exposed to the University of California being exposed to the opportunities in higher education, the opportunities in, in science and agri-science and environmental sciences and so on. So this really started with the idea that we wanted to bring the university to the schools, to the people, to try to take and broaden the exposure of the University of California and the Valley of these students. The primary audience uh, that we're, we're dealing with are uh, students from about 55 different high schools in the San Joaquin Valley. We uh, send out uh, uh, applications to the schools, to the ag teachers, and then they can encourage appropriate students within their programs to, to apply. Once we receive the applications, then we take and uh, we have a committee uh, of faculty and myself and others that are here and past interns. And so we make a selection and then try to match those students with the mentors who have expressed a an interest to in include a student within their program that season. Off the top of my head, since I've been an administrator at Kingsburg High School over the last 15 years, I know of at least five interns that have participated in this program. It's just been outstanding and, and a wonderful opportunity for our students. We're looking for a student that has uh, demonstrated interest in uh, the agricultural and environmental sciences looking for a student that has obviously a high grade point, college prep uh, background. They may choose to go to a community college and then transfer on to a UC or a CSU at Cal Poly or Fresno State or so on. The, the focus of where they go is not as important as the fact that we want them to pursue their, their dreams, whatever they may be. Um, actually, I found out about the intern program through what they call the Kearney Ag Futures Conference. And what it is is it's a conference that brings high school students um, freshmen through seniors to the Kearney Ag Center and researchers do presentations about what they're currently doing and some of their research and share with the students the diversity that the Kearney Ag Center has to offer. I've been part of the selection process of the interns a number of times over the past nine years. What we do is we have them submit written applications to Kearney and we get anywhere between 10 and 20 probably applications each year and we look through those and determine which are seem to be suitable and qualified for this kind of internship and then we invite a number of them usually oh anywhere between three and six to come and interview and we give them about a half an hour interview and we have a number of the faculty here at Kearney sit and listen to the interview responses and then we we discuss who we think is going to work for the program Actually, I started applying my sophomore year because I wanted to get into the program so badly and I had heard so many great things about the program. And I was unfortunately turned down, of course, because they do have the age requirement. But I just thought it would look good if I applied early and then they would have my name in mind the next year when I applied. And then I reapplied my junior year and I was, um, went through a rigorous interview process and I was accepted into the program. These are high school students, so they um, often don't have a lot of awareness of research or science in general. 
So what we're looking for is someone who's fairly competent with math and science, you know, has had good grades. Most of these kids have been in the FFA program, so they're, they speak very well because they're constantly giving speeches and doing judgings of livestock and, and insects and all sorts of programs. So they're, they're usually really gregarious, outgoing, um, fun kids, but they don't always know a lot of, necessarily know a lot about science and math, and because we're going to be doing research here, they, ha they have to have some basics of math, so that's what we look for. Yeah, it was a bit intimidating when I first started, uh, mostly because it was the first chance that I'd had to work in a scientific setting that was very professional and, and very high caliber. And that was also one of, the, one of the best parts, is I wasn't just you know washing dishes or preparing buffers or something like that. It was a real opportunity to be involved in the process, do some writing and do some collaboration on designing projects. And so it was intimidating, but it was also a very friendly and inviting environment to work in. When I first got here, I was a little uh, hesitant because, you know, I, well, when I first applied, I wanted to be in plant pathology and not in entomology. And uh, as I've told many people, I didn't really have an interest in insects at all. And when I applied here and, you know, started working in it, I found out that it wasn't so, so bad after all. And, you know, <laughs> they're not going to hurt me. Um, I found out I was going to be working in entomology and thought, oh, my goodness, bugs. Okay, and so I had to, before I even came here, I had to get over the fear of having to work with uh, bugs for an entire summer of my uh, high school career, and that's not exactly something I was looking forward to. Um, I arrived and I took a tour of the lab and realized, okay, this isn't so bad. They um, primarily did work with ants and moths, so I could work with ants and moths. There were some things that I was worried about um, having to work with uh, some of the other insects that I was going to have to overcome, but um, once I found out what they were doing and kind of got the feel for things of what they did, I had relaxed and they were more than willing to take me in and show me the ropes and were very polite about, you know, this is what we're going to do, we're going to help you, and then once you feel comfortable, we'll kind of let you go and do your own thing, and that's how it worked, and it worked well for me. Because these are full-blown, ongoing research programs that these students are being placed in. And they, the researcher, the mentor, will actually select out a portion of their ongoing research activity that can be um, a study somewhat by itself. And so that student then can take and identify as this is kind of my own study, portion of the bigger study. And so they're expected to do that work. It's real research work. Uh, many of these students have their names on publications. Many of them have ended up uh, using that as, as leads into other opportunities down the road too. Uh, normally what we do, we, uh, we have a, a very active post-harvest program here, which is serving the valley. Uh, most of the commodities that are growing in the valley, like uh, peaches, nectar, and plum, grapes, kiwi fruit, pomegranate, and others, apples, cherries, with, among them. So what we do, we uh, give a small really simple but important research project for this student to develop under our uh, supervision. So they are exposed to research from the moment that they have to look for a problem, understand the problem, then learn about the problem and the potential solutions of the problem, and then they kind of uh, design their research to test their hypothesis and we work with them on the way to the end. And what I call the end means that they have to write a report. Of course, they have to do the work, evaluate the, 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 the treatments, and understand the results, write a report, and then they have to have a public uh, order presentation of the report, and I can kind of defend their result in front of the audience. So it's a really complete uh, program that takes a lot of my time. So I kind of, uh, I have been, 10 years here, almost 10 years, and I've done five of them. I worked in Carlos's lab in the post-harvest laboratory, and I worked on a project that was really almost like a big project, it seemed like. It was six weeks long, and it was um, the difference between ripening fruit on the tree and picking it immature and ripening it within the lab. And so there was this whole on and off aspect, you know, on the tree, off the tree ripening, and um, how the storage is affected by that. Say, industry tree ripened or, you know, in the packing shed ripened in the storage. And so there was, 
looking at the difference in the comparison there and, and how well it held up it, to storage life and that type of thing. So that was really, really interesting and very exciting at the time. We actually found from that and later um, research that picking the fruit, you know, just at maturity, not real soft on the tree, but just at maturity, putting it into storage, just a few days, ripen it in storage, and then put it um, at the storage temperature for a long period of time ended up, you know, really producing a good piece of fruit, even though it's been stored for several several weeks, mm -hmm. and that's actually now an industry practice. Um, and I work in the industry. I work around the packing sheds now, and they're implementing that. So something that we had done five, six years ago is now out there in industry, and that's really exciting to see that. I was a little bit surprised at, at actually the standard that they set for me, you know, and I, I really had to do a lot of independent work and, and really think independently. It was very challenging, you know, to, to, put, a, to, to put together a project, to, uh, to, to carry on a little bit of independent research. I had a lot of help, I can't deny that, but then also to present it you know, the, the, way, uh, the way I had to do it. It was really an authentic research experience, I think. I never realized what kind of effort was put into the, the experiments. Everything had to be extremely detailed. Everything had to be written down. You had to have a record of everything, every treatment used, you know, every t treatment temperature you held the fruit out, how long it was, how long the treatment was, etc. Everything had to be meticulously recorded. Um, the people here, in terms of who you have to work with, are wonderful. Um, anything you need, if it's in your lab or if it's somebody that you have a question for that's not in your lab, they're more than willing to work with you and talk to you. So People are wonderful. When the students come here, they often think that they're going to be either ag business majors or veterinarians because that's their experience in the world. That's what they know science is. And when they come here, they often find out um, a lot more about research and agriculture. And so the types of skills they're getting here is not really training in a specific subject, it's more of an exposure to agricultural science. And some of the students spend their eight weeks here and say, glad that's over with. And others get very excited about it and change the direction of their schooling, because most of them are juniors and seniors in high school. And some have decided, well, I'm not going to, you know, go into the veterinary medicine. I want to do entomology or plant pathology instead. Um, and others just uh, consider it a real good experience to understand science better and to get more uh, experience with presenting information. And they use it to go on to national competitions within FFA. So they come for a variety of reasons, and they and they gain something out of it, no matter what. But I also gained an appreciation for, for research and the, the process that they go through, the whole, scientific, the whole scientific method. Plus, it, it, it helped me become more comfortable with, with reading and, and writing and public speaking, you know, things that scare the death out of a lot of, a lot of students. You know, just it helped break that, that barrier and helped increase familiarity with all that. The interns frequently make such a good contribution to the projects that we as faculty hire them on either for the rest of the summer or for next summer or the summer after. So frequently Ag Futures interns come back here and work in future years. So we use them as, as a workforce and we really appreciate their contribution. Well, actually for me, once I completed the program, it led to me coming back each summer for approximately the next eight years. Um, I would come and work and he would always need extra help and he would always invite me to come back since he, since I had done such a great job during my internship, he would invite me back every year and I would come and it was a good way, opportunity for me to make extra cash and it helped me earn my way through school and also once I graduated with my bachelor's degree he invited me back to work on a grant basis, working full time, and I did that for a year. This year, the Kearney Research and Extension Center hosted two student interns, Fassel Salim and Allison Wolgamuth. Fassel attends Layton High School in Layton, California, where he is about to begin his senior year. Uh, before my parents, when they first came here, um, they started farming in uh, Selma. And at first, I didn't know too much about the industry and how it worked. And as soon as I getting, got older, 
I started finding, you know, how ag agriculture is very interesting and how this whole uh, state is based on, the economy is based on agriculture. And um, st as I, my advisor started sharing, you know, some of the careers in agriculture, I started to get more interested, like the science of agriculture and how it um, helps a lot of farmers out um, using pesticides and and finding better economic ways of dealing with um, pest in, the, um, in uh, all sorts of agriculture products. The research project that uh, Fossil had a chance to work with was a uh, part of a larger project that we're interested in. And we're interested in a particular insect, Ligus, the Ligus bug, that affects a number of crops. One of the questions that we had is as we go and estimate the population in uh, alfalfa hay, are we influencing our population estimate by uh, the time of day. So his project was to look at uh, population estimation based on uh, the, the time of day. Um, during the morning hours, what I do is I go out in the field and take samples, uh, 180 degrees uh, arcs, taking samples during the day. And during the afternoon, once, once I got all the samples, I come in the lab and I analyze it, separating the plants and other bugs from the ligus. And the ligus is placed into another container and then I write the, I record it on a bag, and then it's entered in an Excel program, and it's totaled up. It was basically his research project. I, again, I was, this was my first uh, intern, and I was more or less uh, encouraged to really let them go and do their own work. Um, let them point them in the right direction, support them wherever we could. Dr. Charlie Summers and I basically came up with the idea uh, uh, high school seniors not expected to have a whole lot of depth in experimental design, so we designed the experiment so it was a, uh, uh, a um, appropriate design. But beyond that, he set the field up, he set the plots up, he did the samples, he brought them back in, he did the identification, he did all the counting, and then I aided in uh, data summarization and analysis. Having a good relationship with my mentor really helps me with um, completing my research project and eventually do my PowerPoint. And the mentoring it was a big, big factor in me uh, being successful in my internship here at Kriniak Center. Fossil was uh, very enthusiastic. Uh, he had a, an obvious record of hard work, good work ethic, uh, and a real drive to, to learn more about uh, agriculture and how science and what role science plays in agriculture. The other student intern of this year's program is Allison Wogamuff. Allison just graduated from Kingsburg High School in Kingsburg, California. Allison has been working with um, a pest called San Jose scale. And what she's been trying to understand is the, it, the scale insect has different life stages. It starts out as a first instar and then it molds into a second and then a third instar. And she was looking at how an oil spray that a grower might apply to his to his stone fruits, how that might kill the different stages of, of San Jose scale. And what she found was that the smaller, younger instars are more easily killed than the older ones. These are fortune plum trees, and I've been infesting them for the past six weeks with a San Jose scale. I infest the twigs, and then I'm able to cut the twigs and take them up to the lab to do my research. We have cultures of the San Jose scale kept up in the lab, and I take the cultures and I put them in like a paper cup and I bring them down and I take like a small paintbrush and I gently brush the scales onto the twigs of the tree um, and then I wait five to ten days and then I cover them so that they can age and they get attacked by parasitic wasps and ants so if they're not covered they will kill my scales and I need them for my research. In heavy infestations it can cause uh, branches to fall off and trees to die if, it's if it goes unnoticed but um, under on smaller scale, um, it'll get on the fruit and it leaves blemishes on the fruit. So obviously they're not marketable at that point. So that's one of the major concerns. I go through and I check for, you know, all the mortality rates, you know, and I, I get the data and then I transfer the data into graphs and um, use that to prove my points. But I'm basically writing about materials and methods and then what I find through the data um, makes up the bulk of my, my paper. I, uh, I like to be able to learn stuff while I'm working. Most of the work um, in this area is just field work. I mean, outside of Kearney, it's just field work and I don't get to learn a whole lot. But in here, I get to learn the base work for the stuff I do in the fields and it's just extremely challenging to me. I love it. 
Well, each of these studies for this eight-week period is a study that is expected to have, um, obviously, the hypothesis and then follow through with a, with a data collection process and then come back with the data and analyze the data and summarize that in a, in a written form. And so they're expected to put together a written report. And then they're expected to take and, and present that to the, not only the people within their own lab, but to other faculty and technicians and, and research associates, as well as their high school teachers, counselors, parents, family, um, uh, at the conclusion of the, of the internship period. This usually takes about 20 minutes, and it's a PowerPoint presentation today because everybody's using PowerPoint. And then they're open for questions from the audience for another five, 10 minutes. And so it is a formal uh, presentation, formal seminar by this student, which uh, really when you think of the research project is you go ahead and you can uh, conduct the research, but the research isn't really done until you've told somebody about it. And it can be published and it can be written and it can be verbalized and so on. And so uh, that's really kind of the, the um, frosting on the cake at the end of the period. I'd like to welcome everybody here this afternoon. After eight weeks of learning and hard work in conducting their own UC research project, the students make their presentations to friends, relatives, and colleagues. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Swanson. Uh, my name is Fasa Salim. The title of my project was called Investigating the Movement of the Ligus in a Fafa Canopy as a Function of the Time of Day. Uh, some of the background facts about a Fafa is a Fafa is the second most largest crop in California. It's a major feedstock for the cattle and dairy industries. Um, the objective of my project was to, inf um, to evaluate the influence of time of day on ligus population estimates in alfalfa hay. So, uh, for example, if you're sampling in the mornings, you might, you know, or the afternoon, it has, we want to know, does that affect the amount of estimates you're going to get? The experimental design was uh, very important for my experiment. Um, we used a randomized... Each intern's 20-minute presentation includes background information, the project's objectives and hypothesis, a description of the experimental design and sampling techniques, and data recording methods. And the topic of my presentation is San Jose scale and its susceptibility to dormant oil. My objective was to understand the effects of Volk Supreme spray oil on the mortality of the different stages of the San Jose scale. In addition, various concentrations of Volk oil, starting with the 6%, which is the maximum field rate application, and the twigs were sprayed four times on each side to ensure complete coverage, and then were left to dry for 30 to 45 minutes before being placed in a rearing chamber. And we saw on the graph that the higher the concentration of oil, the better the kill or the mortality of all stages of the San Jose scale. Finally, the interns present their results for their research projects. In conclusion, we found that the higher the concentration of oil, the better it will kill all stages of the San Jose scale. My conclusion is that this study, this study really didn't fully explain the differences between the sample time in July. Um, also, the temperature recordings were not well correlated with the population fluctuations. This study does not allow a recommendation for the best time of day to sample ligus in alfalfa. Um, before I close this presentation, I, I would like to thank Dr. P. Cadell for all his time and effort I would like to thank everyone here who has helped make this possible for me with a special thanks to my mentor, Dr. Beth Grafton Cardwell. The presentation is intimidating. You know that the audience is going to be filled with professors who have PhDs and know the subject matter very well. And so you're hoping um, you know your subject matter and of course you do, you just don't feel like you do. Um, you've worked with it for eight weeks, so you know your project. I think their confidence is strengthened tremendously. I, I think that when they, it's the, you often an experience outside of high school that's one of their first. It's in a uh, research facility. It's often their first job as well. And I think it just boosts confidence and helps them know they can conquer anything. The support for this, the financial support, is from donations, uh, primarily service clubs. Fresno County Farm Bureau has supported us the last couple of years. Uh, other organizations, the Stockdale Exchange in, in Kern County. And so, uh, Lions Clubs, Qantas Clubs, uh, any place that I can go out and raise some money and uh, so we can compensate the students. 
some of the interns here have uh, come from communities that are too far away to commute and be part of the program. So what we've done is we also have a network of host homes, just like you'd have an exchange student coming from Germany or Japan or something. And so we would house them within, within a farm family, if we can find the farm family, and they are spending the summer with, with that family and those kids while they're, they're participating in the program here. This year's interns have completed the program and are ready to move on. So what became of some of the interns from previous years? I'm going to Fresno State next in this fall and I actually got a full ride scholarship to Fresno State and um, it pays for like tuition and dorms and books and a laptop and everything and a lot of the things that I did here and other stuff that I was involved in in my FFA and at my high school um, helped me get that scholarship so it was really nice to put on my resume and to send in my paper, you know, about my ag future stuff. Um, I went into Fresno State as a chemistry major. I thought I'd be maybe a pharmacist or somewhere in the, the medicine um, field. And um, the more I worked here and the more the research became more exciting and um, really it felt like groundbreaking um, experience, I wanted to be more a part of that. And so I believe it was my sophomore year, I went plant science agriculture and from there pursued that. Um, I received my degree in May of 2000 and um, now I'm working in the agriculture field. I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo immediately after uh, after that summer and got a lot of got a lot of uh, ribbing from a lot of the people around here because there's quite a UC uh, crowd around here but they, they were encouraging about that and then uh, when I finished there with a bachelor's in agricultural engineering then I went to UC Davis and I got a master's in agricultural engineering, biological and agricultural engineering. I went to Fresno State um, on a scholarship I completed. I actually graduated in December of this last year. And so I um, have applied for graduate school now and I will be attending Cornell University in the spring. So that's where I'm headed. And actually my master's degree will be in entomology. So kind of turn my world around from starting a program here going, oh, I have to work with bugs to, well, now I want to work with bugs. At Fresno State, my degree was in um, agricultural education, and so what I hope to do is um, use my research background and my science background to teach science classes in high school. My goal right now is to get a PhD, probably in genetics, uh, because I really, I really do like to do research. It's what I'm still doing now, and it, it all stems back to the, to the internship program. And so I think I'd like to be a PhD and maybe a professor sometime in the future. Uh, but I think research is probably my primary focus and, and maybe work as a professor also. I think this, this program is very valuable because we need to have leaders in agriculture that, that are trained well, that, that know things about, you know, that, that know technical things. We need leaders that are charismatic, but we also need leaders that, that really know the research that really know the, the facts and the details and this is a this is a great opportunity for people to get involved so I think this 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 program is absolutely indispensable. The Ag Futures internship program at the Kearney Agricultural Center has introduced many young people to opportunities they didn't know existed. The experiences these students had changed the course of their lives and many have gone on to rewarding careers in education and agricultural sciences. They will now have their chance to play a role in shaping the future.